Hey there, I'm Katie Cat, and this is our weekly Astro Tarot for the 25th of November through the 2nd of December. <sighs> we have a pretty strong Mars transit right now. There is a square happening between Mars at zero degrees of Sagittarius with Saturn at zero degrees of Pisces. So there is this engaging of our own sense of responsibility that we're being challenged with right now. Now, the opening card that we have for today is the Magician. The, ma the Magician is representative of Mercury, the planet, which is also in Sagittarius right now. Interestingly enough, um, coming up to square with Neptune, whenever there's a square in a transit, it brings up upon us a challenge, but we have an interesting connotation with the word challenge, right? We're like, I don't like challenges. But if you were playing a game of billiards, as an example, you would want to play someone who's more challenging than you so that you can actually improve your skill set. And life gives us these challenges to improve our skill set, to get us to level up in our lives. So whenever we are faced with a square or if you have a really strong square in your natal chart, consider that life is giving you these opportunities to grow, not to succumb to them. So we have this opening card of the magician today and we see that each one of us has four tools that we are working with in this lifetime. We are working with our physical body by way of the pentacles and our value system. We are working with our emotions by way of cups or you know our relationships. We are working with swords by way of the mind and how we speak not only to others but also to ourselves. And we are also working with the wand, which is our will and how we engage in life and what provokes us to engage, whether that is external circumstances or an internal desire or call. So we see this person who is acting like a conduit of sorts with, you know, something in their hand that they're rising up to the sky, another kind of wand, and they're calling in guidance so that they know how to use these tools. Now consider that right now, Mercury, as I said, is in Sagittarius, it's at 20 degrees of Sagittarius in square with Neptune. And Neptune can be uh, the land of escapism and also the land of vast possibility. So when we enter our mercurial sense into this square relationship with this, it's like we're being called to see illusions that have possibly gotten in our way and prevented us from actually putting our energy in a productive direction. We're being challenged in regard to what we see in our scope of possibility and how we can actually apply ourselves to it. <sighs> the challenge that we have com coming in today is the sign of the king in of swords which is associated with aquarius and also this power of knowledge so what is it that you can't shake off once you see it when, once you know something you can't just disregard it once you experience something you can't negate that knowledge that you've gathered and so this is also part of a challenge and it's interesting that aquarius comes right before the sign of pisces because Saturn leaving this area of Aquarius going into Pisces, which it's actually been in for a few months, is wrapping up this area of Aquarius in our chart and something that was engaged, you know, in 2022 around April. So there's this interesting uh, pinball kind of action that happens with the planets and how they engage certain transits. And we're all experiencing that right now with what's going on astrologically. Now, the way that we get through the challenge is actually another sword card. We have the Eight of Swords here, which is telling us to not waste energy in areas where it's not fruitful. We see someone who's literally bound by some kind of rope or cloth, and they're surrounded by eight swords. They look like they're pretty um, confined and tied up, yet in the background, we see a little bit of sun breaking through the clouds. And considering that this is a number eight, it is hinting to the aspect of time and how things shift and change in time. There's a variable to it. More information comes in during, you know, passing of time. More enlightenment can come in during the passage of time. Things grow in the passage of time. So it's reminding us to not waste energy and to allow 
some information to come in because we see she's also blindfolded and she's not able to see the situation very clearly. So we have to allow things to present themselves. The ultimate outcome <laughs> came in by way of the 10 of wands, which is speaking to some kind of burden that we're carrying. And it can sometimes feel that way. Um, if you are you know, carrying a lot in your heart or carrying a lot in your mind, or even if you just have a lot to do, because we see this person literally is carrying 10 wands, which is their will. And so they have a lot to do. And it's important to, for us to know that we can only handle one thing at a time. And there may be some of these things that we feel like we have to carry, which we're being called to set down. Because ultimately we want to get to the single wand and not be carrying 10 of them. But perhaps we are gathering something to take to a new place. Perhaps we are gathering everything that we've collected by way of knowledge and experience. And that's what we are carrying by way of a burden. Now, that was further clarified by a couple of other cards. We have the Emperor who has shown up again, which is why I mentioned that square that's happening between Mars and Saturn right now. The Emperor, you know, is this energetic of the inner warrior, someone who goes out into chaos and brings order to it. It can also be a um, very powerful, engaging energy. We just had Mars and the Sun, being Kazemi, which in, initiated a two plus year period that we won't be able to see the results from for a bit of time, but it's engaged something in us that we feel encouraged and motivated to pursue. And so this is what it's calling our attention to is what in your life needs you to bring order to it? Where does your inner warrior need to be engaged? Now that was further clarified that by the moon, considering we are moving close to a full moon here in a couple of days, we'll have a full moon on Monday. The moon will be in Gemini opposite the sign of the sun, which is in Sagittarius, which is coincidentally also where Mars just entered into and where Mercury is currently. And whenever there's a full moon, things are brought to light. Things are brought to the surface, which is interesting considering that, you know, we have this power of knowing coming in as our challenge for this week. So what is it that you have been lost in illusion by? It's time for you to see those things with clear light so that you can get back on your path and be aligned with that. Now, wherever you have Gemini sitting in your natal chart is gonna give a hint to the area of your life that you feel a bit of enlightenment toward, um, whether it's in the first house, the second house, the third house, fourth house, fifth house, sixth house, all the way around to the twelfth house. Each of those houses represent a different area of your life. And having these anchors or these celestial bodies in those areas are highlighting those areas for you to do work on. If you would like to look at your natal chart and look at the transits that are happening for you in the coming year of 2024, reach out to me at rootsofalchemy at gmail.com or through messenger or write me a note <laughs> and we'll figure out how to sync up. I am scheduling into the third week of December and into the new year currently. Um, now, Considering this full moon, it's going to bring things up. It's going to bring up emotions. It's going to bring up conversations, but it's ultimately bringing us clarity so that we can calibrate our energy and our effort into a productive space as we engage the energy that Mars and the sun just met with. So the ultimate outcome at the end clarity is this nine of pentacles which is asking us which project do you feel like you need and are feeling called to complete over the next two years because that's what is currently being engaged and having mars and saturn in a square relationship right now it's bringing calling us to task quite literally considering that saturn is this planet of responsibility and can bring some um intensity by way of forcing us to look at things that we really need to consider as we choose our path and engage in a certain direction in our lives. So this friction or this challenge between Mars and Saturn is calling us to task and 
asking us to look at what do we want to complete? What do we want to build in our lives? Because it's far too easy to lose precious time to things that might be an irritant or frustrating. And we have to consider the tools, right? The tools that we each have by way of the body and the mind and the emotions and our will and how we engage that. And if all of those aspects of ourselves are in alignment, because ultimately they need to be in order for us to grow and become and move forward in a, in a way that actually brings us some joy and satisfaction in our lives. So how do we engage? What calls you to engage? Is it your mind? Is it outside circumstances? Is it your heart? What is it in you that calls you to move? We're all taking a look at that. I send you a lot of love and a good wish as we move through the rest of the year. I'm out visiting my family right now, which is why I'm in a different space. And I'll be back uh, to my normal surroundings in a few days, but I will be moving pretty soon. So you'll see different backgrounds <laughs> uh, in the future. I wish you well, and I hope you are well, and I hope you were surrounded by people that bring peace to your heart and comfort to you overall as we move through this holiday season. Much love. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.